Hi guys, it's Jess again. Um, as promised, here we are with the Victoria plums to make our plum jam. Um, I harvested these, as I said I would, from my father-in-law's tree. This year they're quite small. Um, if you look at that, that's a very, very small Victoria plum. Um, I don't know what happened, but most things this year, especially fruit, um, seems to have ended up small. There was plenty of them on there. But I think there was something to do with not getting water at the right time of spring or early summer. And um, they're a bit disappointing, but they do smell and taste just as good as Victoria's ever do. We, um, My wife stoned all of these plums because um, she loves my plum jam. So that's her part of the process. You know, she volunteers to, to stone them all. And when I came down this morning and went into the conservatory where we put them, last night the smell was absolutely fantastic and I can smell them coming off of off of this pot full I've got here so <clears throat> I'm just going to stone the last of them fortunately Victoria's are excellent for stoning because as you can see stone just falls straight out which is wonderful uh, those plums that we used to make the plum sauce um, and the plum chutney they were really difficult because the, the fruit stuck to the stone now, which made them a real pain to try and stone, but Victoria's are a, a, a pleasure, if you can call stoning plums any kind of pleasure. <clears throat> so, I just put the last of these in here, my token gesture for uh, for the whole lot. My wife did six pounds, or eight pounds actually, I think we've got, if not maybe ten off of the tree, I would think there's six in here. And I look over the other side of the kitchen there, I don't know, there might be another six over there, so... We've got plenty of plum jam coming, and uh, my token gesture is to is to just stone three, good isn't it? <laughs> That's the way. So <clears throat> we've got our, our six pounds of plums, which will just about, I know that's going to boil down okay for the, the, the subsequent jamming process um, to fit in this, in my, my jam kettle that I've got here. So there's six pounds of plums in there. Now, to the six pounds of plums, we're going to want to add a pint of water. That's the first thing. So we get ourselves a pint of water. Okay, so there's our pint of water. I'm going to add a pint of water to that. Okay. Now, the other, we need to add one more thing to for the, the fruit boiling part. Um, of the exercise and that is uh, we need some acid in here um, these Victoria plums are dessert plums they don't actually have that much pectin they're probably medium uh, medium pectin levels and they certainly don't have a great deal of acid they're very ripe and they're sweet and they're, they're like I say they're supposed to be dessert plums um, and so we all we need to add a little bit of acid now you can add lemon juice if you like um, but it can make it lemony, funnily enough. So what I prefer to do is just to add um, sort of tasteless acid. Um, and what I've got here is citric acid. Now you can buy this from any um, brewing supply store. Uh, I'll also have it up on my MIA store for you if you want to get it um, online. It's much easier. It's delivered to your home, isn't it? You don't have to go out for it. So this will be available on <clears throat> my A store. Um, and it's just pure citric acid, so it doesn't really have any taste to it. Fruit acid it is. And all we will need to do is add a level teaspoon of that. Now that just increases the acidity, because probably, I don't know whether you know, but the gelling process for jams, the setting process, if you like, for jams and uh, for jellies, is a combination of acidity, um, pectin and sugar. And those things have to be in the right proportion for it to for it to gel. So we, we need to make sure that we've got the right amount of acidity in there. So that's now ready. All I need to do now is to give that a good stir round to get that acid in there. Probably it would have been better had I used my common sense to have sprinkled that acid on the top and then poured the water over the top to take it down. But it's not a problem. There we are, so that's all stirred in. Now, all I have to do with that is stick it on the stove 
and i want that to boil down until it's a nice mushy consistency so it's just a just a puree not really much left in the way of solid plums i'll come back and show you the consistency that i would have it to later and you want to do that by eye it shouldn't take more than 20 minutes at the most maybe half an hour dependent on how hard your plums are but the um the the important thing is to make sure you do it on the lowest possible heat you know be patient simmer it on the lowest possible heat and make sure you've got a lid tight on the top because you want to make sure <clears throat> that you don't lose all those lovely subtle flavors that are in the plums the harder i've said it before the harder you boil things the more these these delicate flavors get boiled away and all you end up with is a a jam or a jelly that just tastes sweet like the stuff that you buy the cheap stuff you buy in the supermarket and we don't want that that's that's not why we're doing it we can go and buy that in the supermarket can't we okay so i'm just going to boil those down and i'll come back and show you the consistency uh, that i get and, and you know what i think is about the right look um, for going on to the next process so i'll see you in about half an hour hi guys so here i am back uh, i've boiled the plums now and i just want to show you what we've got in here i don't know whether i can hold that up maybe to the camera and let it focus on it that beautiful color it's almost the color of my shirt and the consistency they've been on for about they came to the boil and then i let them boil for about 20 minutes i suppose so we've got a a watery sort of beautiful pink almost a rhubarb pink um colored liquid there of the stewed fruit okay so that was six pounds um, of fruit i started with six pounds of fruit a pint of water uh, and a level teaspoon of the citric acid to, to to get the acid up because as i said the dessert plums they haven't got a lot of acid in them um, right so um, the first half of the sugar um, i've already measured out so we'll put that in okay that's the first half of the sugar going in and then we'll um we'll just put the second half in just weigh it out you know we don't have to be to the you know to the to the half half ounce it's uh, um so we want that's about right okay so that's that's the other half so there's three pounds first half and three pounds of sugar for the second half and uh, slightly over actually and a bit too much over so we'll just tip a little bit of that back in the bag that's more like it okay so that second half then wants to go in there there we are, we have a right nice full jam kettle there. As you can see, all my jars are sterilised. And whether you can see that, the good old faithful pressure cooker here in the background been boiling away while I while the, the fruit was boiling. In my usual way, I started making the jam and thought, oh damn, I haven't got enough I haven't got enough jars. It's always the way with me. So I got the old pressure cooker out and got that going at the same time. So what I'm doing now is I start the heat. Now this wants to be a vigorous boil and I just want to dissolve the sugar. Make sure you get the sugar dissolved into the plum uh, juice before it gets too hot because you don't want anything catching on the bottom. But it doesn't take a moment for the, the sugar to dissolve. And that's produced, I'm not going to pick this up again because it's a bit, uh, bit uh, heavy and, and hot. But that's, that's deepened the colour already to a richer, deeper red um, just by putting the sugar in there. And I'm going to let that come to the boil and I'm going to give it a vigorous boil for about five minutes, maybe a bit longer because these are very weak really, these dessert plums in pectin. I might boil it for, for six or seven minutes. I don't want it to go that horrible dark brown colour. You know, I don't want that. So... Um, I'm going to boil it for for five minutes, perhaps a little more, and then start doing the setting test um, on my faithful white spoon rest, and we'll have a look at that and see how we're going. Um, so I'll come back to you then. Okay. 
Okay guys, so here we are after um, boiling up the uh, sugar with the, the fruit juice. Um, now I've got a few confessions to make here. Um, it took about 15 minutes uh, in total of boiling this. And after about five minutes I had a look at it and it was a beautiful pink colour and so on, but I could see there was no chance that it was going to set. So I added another um, pound uh, of sugar um, and it still wasn't really going to go. I added a tiny bit more sugar and it still wasn't going. Now the reason for all of this is simple. These are dessert plums, they're Victoria plums, and they're nice and ripe. Now that makes a beautiful tasting jam, but unfortunately there's very little pectin. If you did my pectin test that you can see um, on my blog, uh, you would find that there will be very, very little pectin in there. So, what I had to do, because I, you know, I want to preserve this jam, it is gorgeous jam, and, you know, some people say, ah, it's cheating and so on, but I would rather have all those flavours and that gorgeous colour and get a set on it by using, um, you know, perhaps not totally natural methods, uh, than then boil it right down to it's black and tasteless and all those flavours have gone out. So what I use is I decided to bring out the Old Faithful, which is the Certo. And this is apple pectin. So, I mean, it is natural. It's totally natural. It's just apple extract. And it's just pectin juice, basically. And I put a whole bottle of that in on the six pounds of plums. And hey, presto, you take it off the... We'll read the instructions on the Certo, but you take it off the boil, turn the, the heat off completely, Pour the Certo in and just stir it around. Simple as that. And hey presto, look, we've got a fabulous set there now. Okay, and look at that lovely colour. That gorge, we've still got that lovely apricotty pink colour. And the taste we've got here now in this jam, look, it beautifully set, has been preserved. You know, you can really taste those Victoria plums. And I boiled it down and down and down, it went all brown. It just tasted sweet, like the stuff that you can buy cheap in the store. So that's my tip there. If you're struggling to get a set, get the Certo in there. Don't keep boiling and boiling and boiling because you just lose the flavour. Use Certo. It works every time. So there's my, my plum jam. And, you know, from time to time, there you are. Here's, here's the real deal. It didn't set for me. But, of course, we have an answer. So... There you go. I'm going to go off and make the rest of it. I've got about 20 pounds of these plums to get through. So it's going to be a long and hot day. So uh, I'm slaving over the stove. So until next time, guys, goodbye.